Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 3 vs 3 on Narach Lake and in this one I'm going to be playing with the 12th Tata Lake. On my team I have Tiny Rick and Awo Kado who are going to be playing with the 116th Panzer and 5th Panzer on the Axis side. On the Soviets our opponents are Kerbs, Itadek and Ceylon who are going to be using the 44th Guards Rifles, 26th Guards Rifles and maneuverable group Bazugli. So as you may have noticed we're playing one of the Hungarian divisions for once. This isn't, isn't something I think I've done yet on the channel. I haven't even covered one of them in the battle group previews which is something that I had intended to do sooner but I just haven't ended up playing them or making divisions with them. But I played this game on stream and this gave me a chance to really show off one of the divisions. Now make sure if you haven't already to go follow me on twitch.tv slash falconhdgaming. That is where I'm hoping to be streaming from now on as opposed to on YouTube. So that's pretty important that you guys are aware. But either way, let's talk about this division. So, it's a Hungarian division and there's a lot of words I'm going to get wrong. But uh, massive thanks to Hatziat for helping me out with the pronunciation of a lot of the units. Hopefully I'll do them justice and if not... I'm sure he'll give me tips once again. Uh, but either way, uh, we'll just see uh, what I'm getting down here whilst we keep the deployment sped up because it was quite a long deployment. So I've got a couple of couple of uh, Goyo Solo Shock at the front here. These are the long range infantry. They come with like three machine guns. So they're really good at locking down places at range. So that's what we're going to be intending to do here. I was going to put one uh, in this building to kind of cover the road and just the top side here where this flag is and I was also going to have one over on the left hand side up on the hill I believe uh, to just cover the open against advancing infantry. Behind that you can see I've got a bunch of these AT guns I've got eight of them these are the 40 mils their penetration is only 65 millimeters I believe unless the enemy armor gets within 800 meters range in which case you get 180 millimeters of penetration because you get the equivalent of like a rocket for it which it can do quite a bit of damage, but yeah, at range, only 65 millimeters of penetration. So you're going to be looking for efficient shots in the side armor, or just in general, you're going to be looking to engage at closer ranges. Behind those, you can see I've got a couple of uh, Lovest Tist. These are going to be uh, providing command to the different hills. I can actually show you guys the orders now. So I'm going to have like basically AT guns and all of the forests here and then I've got command sort of sat behind them at the front I do also have some AA that I'm bringing up the 36M this thing just here looking nice and cool being dragged by the baton and all of these are supported by infantry in some way or another and we've got some offensive infantry here the uh, uh, Lang Sodoshok and the Arkazok as well the Akazok are the basically pioneers with the HE grenades. Uh, the Lang Soroshok are the flamer squads. And I've actually got them coming in uh, with the Komsomolets, which is a cool Russian vehicle. You can see them there just sitting on the side. <laughs> Looks very cool. Either way, a tie deck's going to be bringing in the Yak 9 at the start, flying over our lines, seeing what's going on see if we're going to bring out anything to challenge him. He's also going to be coming in for some strafing runs by the looks of things. Going to go for the snipe onto the Sturm Pioneers. Does manage to pick one off. That is a cheeky kill. That's for sure. Tiny Rex going to be using his Panzerwerfer here. They're now in the game with the 116th arriving. They're going to be putting down a bunch of rockets onto the far side of the town as he advances with his Pioneers. I'm going to be joining him now with my own uh, Louvers uh, Felderetok and the uh, Ar Arkazok. <laughs> I will get used to saying these, but my batons end up getting shot by the AT gun up on the hill just before I unload the troops there. So I do unfortunately lose both of my standard infantry. The recon infantry does manage to get into the town to support Tiny Rick. So we got a little bit of recon there now which is nice because we can reveal the enemy squads that we're up against allowing uh, longer range engagements but that's not exactly what Tiny Rick wants so maybe not ideal. 
Anyway, uh, you can see the positioning of my AT guns. I have a lot of them, but every single heavy forest has one. And the main reason for that is, if you haven't noticed already, we have a juggernaut division on our hands with only 90 income in phase A. So we are going full defensive here with these cheap AT guns. They're only 30 points apiece. And we're just going to build up the front line. Although, saying that, I do decide to get a little bit of aggression on the go with these Hotchkiss 39s. Bringing in a bunch of them here. These are nice cheap tanks, 30 points apiece again. Uh, they're going to be pushing up and hopefully helping out any infantry that's in this town against the advancing Strathniki. And what's nice about these Hotchkiss, they do have 60 front armor, so their machine guns uh, can actually you know, pin down infantry over time and won't necessarily be pen uh, penetrated by the PTRDs that the Strathniki and the Straugi DP have. Anyway, my comms summer let's moving up. This is a uh, although it has a machine gun, it's a bit useless uh, because the PDRDs will penetrate that very, very quickly indeed. Uh, these AT guns, you might see them aiming on the hill but not firing. That's because they have efficient shots and, well, the only thing they can currently see is a Tiger. This Tiger here, the T6 Tiger, the captured Russian Tiger sitting across the way covering the town in a really nice position there actually to kill anything that comes up the road including my Hotchkiss 39s when they get there meanwhile Tiny Rex just flying about with his ME109 getting us some lovely recon information we are going to be spotting out their AA here and there's also the mortar on the side of the hill there as well providing fire onto my Lovas Feldaretok so these uh, imp Infantry squads, the recon here, are actually really nice. I have enjoyed using these infantry squads that have more men in them because they're just so much more resilient and therefore stay alive for a long time, providing you with all the information you would ever want. The Hodgkiss 39s will get there eventually. You can see that I'm pull the pulling them off to one side with the intention of driving through the towns with the cover of the buildings as opposed to up the main road where the Tiger can get the shot on. You see if I show you the line of sight of the Tiger, that's why I'm pushing the Hotchkiss into those positions behind these trees and houses. The Panzerwerfer is going to be firing away again, just trying to pin down more infantry in the town, stop the advance onto our flag. But currently it's 13 to 11 with a minor defeat in 31 minutes. Since there are some flags that are being contested, especially this one that Awakado is trying to put pressure on with the Panzer IV. So he's just stopped it there by moving that up. But so far, has not had a good time. A lot of his infantry has been pushed out of here. And until he can get some more momentum in the mid to late game, he's going to be in trouble. I'm just bringing up some AT guns in the meantime to pop anything that might try to rush down the road. Since the Gavadi here are still doing damage. Uh, PTRDs in the town are also hitting him in the side armor. This Panzer IV is in a terrible position. And it's going to be forced back. Anyway, my Hotchkiss, they have arrived. And they're going to be pushing very slowly through the trees here into the back of the town. I really like seeing these Hotchkiss fire on the move. They look really cool. We're breaking down those fences as they move forwards. And since I do have this recon here, I'm planning to use the recon in combination with the tanks to just lock down this town for the time being and potentially make a little bit of an aggressive play. But my left side is completely safe. I have the uh, Lang Soroshok here. They were intended to get into this building but they didn't. Um, for some reason I couldn't get them in there. Uh, so they're just hanging out behind the building at the moment with the Komsomolets. Uh, bringing in another AT gun on the far right, so that's going to be all of these units here just kind of helping hold the line if anything tries to push forwards, any uh, infantry or, or anything like that pushes down the road, then the, the 40 mils are perfect for taking care of those. But for now it's just a matter of like attempting to contest the town a little bit. One of my Hotchkiss does get crew killed and uh, this one's just managing to hide behind the building at the moment. This one's just bouncing PTRDs off the front armor which is the reason that they work quite well in this sort of combat, but as you can see, the criticals are mounting up. But if I can get them pinned, then I might be able to move up, and that was kind of the intention. 
There is a KV-1E behind the town, but you can see that's lacking line of sight. The Tiger also lacks line of sight into this area. But not onto that poor tank. Gets blown to smithereens. <laughs> this Tiger just utterly annihilating them. Okay, we're getting so shot from the left-hand side now. This Tiger comes round. And the use of high ground by Ceylon here was really, really nice. Just to kind of get shots onto my Hotchkiss in the low ground. I was hoping I'd have a bit more cover here, but... Apparently not the case. The Hotchkiss 39 firing at the T6 to no avail will get armor, like armor cracked and blown up. So just limited engagements in the early game. As I already mentioned, I am Juggernaut, so it is going to take a while to ramp up. The 40 mil, we're going to be having those on the top of these hills to provide anti-air against the planes that Ate deck are using. We are up against uh, Bazookli as well, so IL-2s in the mid to late game could certainly build up and do a lot of damage. Going to be bringing up a couple of these BMWs. These BMWs are hilarious. They are basically motorcycles, which sound really nice actually, uh, with 20mm AT rifles on them. They do have 40mm of penetration, which has potential to do some sort of damage, but... The fact that they're on motorcycles means that <laughs> that's very unlikely to be the case. You'd have to get like an ambush going or something. They say on this right hand side, maybe you could line up a bunch of motorcycles either side and then just keep them on return fire and then as a tank comes down the middle just open up and see how much damage you can do. That would be hilarious. And getting a kill onto like a King Tiger or something with one of these, I wonder if it's even possible. Anyway, uh, that would be on the wrong side. You'd have to do an Axis versus Axis game. Now, since I don't really have much else to do at the moment, you can see I am just building up my AI network. I've got another 40 mil coming in here. That's going to be sitting behind this hill. We've got one on top of the hill there. We've got one here. And all of my AT guns just holding fire for the time being since uh, they don't have any targets they can actually kill. Uh, my Lovas Feldaritok are still in the town. Uh, the Goyo, Goyo Solo Shock here aren't really doing too much. Uh, because they are pinned and so they are not contesting the flag which sucks but as they do recover they should be able to push that back just a little bit but with the KV-1E on its way uh, that's not too good now the Go Goyo Thoroshok are going to reveal themselves just slightly by shooting at the church here but yeah that's going to mean they get pinned down now I do actually manage to get some nice shots onto the T-3476, my 40mm does find penetration chance into the side armour, so we're just hammering that at the moment. Hoping that I can maybe pick up a kill. And the thing is, if a T-34 goes down, that is 55 points, killed by a 30 point AT gun, so... No, it's not, not bad at all. Anyway, with Phase B arriving, I can bring in Stugs, so I thought I would probably should uh, get some sort of armor on the field. And Tartalek does have Stugs, I think it's the best tank that they can get. Well, nice kill there from Tiny Rick, going to be bringing a Panther up onto this hill to support us. Pops the one of the KV-1Es, pops the second, going to be taking a shot at another KV-1E all the way back there. Lovely stuff. My 40 mil has also opened up now. That's going to be firing at the T3476 down on the ground. Uh, down here. We do actually manage to find the kill, so... Yeah, another AT gun that pays itself twice over. Good use of smoke to uh, cover off against this AT gun. Which means that we can shoot it from both sides, but... With all of these AT guns up on the hill, that does allow us to find quite consistent side shots. As more or less at all times, uh, multiple AT guns will be firing from different angles. So if, for example, troops come down here, they will get shot from multiple AT gun angles. And there will always be at least a 90 degree angle that we can side shot. A plane does come in. I believe it got shot down there. That is a destroyed yak. We have a lot of AA. These three pieces causing a lot of problems and you've got to realize that I do have the command here this is my commander these Lovez and then we got this these uh, Lovez TIS squads just hanging about providing two star veterancy to all of the AA so that's why it's so damn lethal got some uh, 
to Serek coming up, or to Serek, <laughs> something like that. Uh, they're going to be hoping to support my pushes just a little. And of course we're going to have some more Loves coming up. But here is my plan taking shape. You're probably wondering what is he going to do with Juggernaut? Well, let me introduce you, my friends, to the 149mm artillery. I'm going to be buying in plenty of these bad boys, and they come in with absolutely awesome tractors. I'll try and show them off. But for now, we're just going to be firing at the T6 Tiger. They do have use of radio, so we're going to get some pretty decent accurate shots onto the Tiger. Start doing some damage to that tank with the hope of maybe randomly blowing it up. Uh, Stugs are now engaging enemy units. We've got the KV-1E engagement there. And the Tiger's also engaging as well. And my Stug, not in the best position, is going to get forced to fall back. But do manage to pin down the 45mm AT. My Lovas fell Delitok, going to get the better of the Strelke DP as they push up. This squad was doing so damn well. With the Gewehrs, I think they're Gewehrs. I think it was holding just really, really nicely on its own. Some more coming on their way. More Lovas fell Delitok, that's more of the recon. We've got some more Loves, these are the Sad Infantry squads. And I've got another command that's going to be following those up. We do manage to hold on to this flag for the time being, but it is sort of swinging backwards and forwards. Uh, Avocado is putting plenty of pressure onto this flag now, which is uh, forcing uh, Kerbs to bring in some Yak-1Bs. My AT gun still firing away. It is actually managing to pick off infantry as they come down this road. So it was actually quite effective, but we do now have rocket artillery coming in as the Panther continues to pop another KV-1E. There goes the AT gun there. And there also goes the Panther. So we no longer have the Panther cover. Just as my infantry start to advance. These do lack machine guns, which is one thing that I don't particularly like about them. But you can get a lot of them. So we're throwing them into the front line here in hopes that we can just solidify this flag for the time being. AL2 tries to come in with the cluster bomb munition, does get forced back by the amount of AA that I do have in position. And we've got even more infantry on the way. So IL2. Let's see if we can get onto that. Sorry about the camera sometimes, guys. That's going to be blowing up another Panther. Coming under loads of fire again, though. And one thing I did notice throughout the game was that my AA was only really firing from here after the strikes came through. So I do start to bring in even more AA at some point. But for now, just uh, chilling in phase B, making sure we got all of the infantry we need to hold this flag. And then I can just buy in more of these artillery pieces and just create a massive artillery battery at the back of the map. So here comes another AA piece to join us at the front line. Going to be losing one of my batons there. Uh, the other one unloaded earlier, but so I lost a unit of Lofers before they unloaded due to this Tiger covering the road again. Still haven't taken that out. I have noticed that these Tigers uh, can be very, very strong for a very long time with Bazookly. I mean, Tigers in Phase A are always good. We do finally manage to crack it. That might have been because of Tiny Rex Pack 40 there, but with that out of the way, we can now be a bit more aggressive in the town. But there is, of course, enemy artillery coming in now, and that's going to start pinning down our infantry advances and, and stopping that Panther A from supporting the push. So at the moment, I'm just chilling, and I'm supporting Tiny Rex in this offensive. And we have actually managed to take this flag on the far side of the town uh, because of that, so that was nice. Yak 9B is coming in with their bombing strikes. They do manage to actually take out the Tiger. I believe that was 
or the panther, sorry, the tiger come forwards and took that out whilst it was falling back. So nice move there. Anyway, my fourth AA unit is on the way and uh, we've got some more AT coming up to basically help out since I want to replace every AT gun that I lose and we I think we lost the one on the right hand side here or maybe I just decided to move this one over either way uh, I've also got a baton coming up for this pack 40 I wanted to reload Tynerik's uh, pack 40 here with APCR so that he could continue to be a threat to things like the tiger uh, therefore not allowing um, them to push on us but we have an attack on the way over on this left hand side you can see a deck coming in with lots of T-34s. He's got some infantry there as well. My AT guns are getting ready. And away they go. We're firing away onto their units. If we can take out the infantry at the front or maybe just side shot some of the tanks, that'd be fantastic. Do you manage to get the engine destroyed there onto one of the T-34Es? It gets actually destroyed. This infantry at the front is making ground. I was a little bit worried about that. This 40 mil still holding its fire. Struggling to aim at the moment, I think. But all of these T-34s, they're going to get shot from this right-hand side. And these 40 mils are three-star veterans, see? So they're going to be firing very quickly indeed. We've got that road covered very nicely. And those T-34s are not having a good time as they take so many criticals. Bailed out, crew kill, transmission damage. And there is some Sapri that have made it. My Lang Shock are not really in a good position here. Got another 40 mil coming up on the left hand side. That's going to be almost strafed but I managed to unload it just in time. But all of the T-34s are dealt with. So I just need to push back the Sapri. They did manage to take the flag briefly. But I will be able to push back one squad. That's no problem. Do manage to shoot down that Yak as well. So get an extra cherry on top. But check out this road. Absolutely annihilated. It was a nice try from a tie deck. But uh, this is why I set up all of the AT guns to begin with. Just to avoid pushes like that. So I've got a couple of uh, Lofes on the way. I can use my artillery here as well if I need to. So it's not the biggest deal. This T-34 is taking a little bit longer to go down than the others. But since we are shooting it from in front and on the side, we do have a decent chance of, of killing that at some point. Anyway, we are into phase C and that means that I have the rest of my artillery available. And that's going to be three more 149 mils pen um, penetrated. Uh, purchased is what I meant to say. And check out these tractors. These are what I meant to show off sooner. <laughs> they are amazing. And yeah, they're just going to be spreading out nicely uh, so that they can't all be counter batteried with one targeting and then we'll add them to the same group so that I can just create massive barrages onto our opponents. So holding the line you can see my, my defense is nice and thick. We do have plenty of AT guns a little bit further back to kill anything that breaks through the center of these hills. But having mown down the Sapri, I'm able to get my little vest into position and while well, this T-34 now track broken it's just going to be sitting there till it dies. It looks like I didn't actually push up this supply far enough to the pack 40. That's my bad. But yeah, in general, still holding ground in the town. That's all good. And I think with the cap of the flag on the far right side here, we're pushing 13 to 11. So we will be a minor feat for our opponents in 30 minutes. But it's still what to play for, for sure. I think we have divisions, especially the 116th and 5th Panzer, that are built for better late game, especially with Tiny Rick putting his onto Juggernaut. So if we can get through the early game, then we will have a good chance in the late game since our opponents were using Balanced and Atadek was using the uh, Maverick as well. So that push with the T-34Es was like pretty much the last... Of what Itai deck could do during this game 
um, in, in a sense of building up a big push. Uh, with Maverick with only 80 points per minute in Phase C, he's going to become much more of a supportive player. Anyway, with the infantry dying here, I noticed that there's not actually much on this left side with the way that the front line's shifting. So I'm actually pushing up my uh, Lothurst aggressively. Uh, there is the SU-88. So you can only get one of these with Bazoogly, but that's managed to stay at the back there, covering this left-hand side for the time being. Panther A does take a shot, misses. If it had hit, that would have been a very dead Nas horn. Uh, Yak 9B coming in on the right hand side, going for the bombing strike onto the Panzergun Führer. There's also a bunch of mortar fire coming down there. One of my AT guns has been taken out. The other one's still sitting there supporting our avocado. Now we see the Panzerwerfer for firing away. Going to be trying to pin down this far side hill. And my intention with this infantry is to unload them behind the hill and then charge over towards this side where the rockets are indeed coming in so whatever's there should more or less be pinned down but there goes a Jagdpanzer on the left hand side Mandorfez still making ground it was really nice there is no flag here except from like when we get up to these towns so gaining this ground isn't really too much special but here comes the IL-2, goes for the rocket strike onto the Panther A, then goes over my AA net. Really looking for the kill here, hoping that I can get it. Don't manage to get it this time around. Another one's going to be coming in. The Panther with it falling back is going to get perfect side shots, but really not enough. Can we shoot down the second one? These IL-2s are really, really tanky against AA. And since we have like four AA pieces here, two of them have, actually I think three of them actually have three star veterancy. We do manage to shoot that one down. Actually have two star veterancy, sorry. Uh, but here comes even more infantry, more Lothes. And I've got another AA piece or two coming up as well. They're just going to be spreading out onto the backside hills here to prevent those IL-2s from doing damage. I did mention about the 40 mils or the IL-2 sorry and how they are, are coming in hot with the maneuver group Bazookly in the late game and that's what looks like trying to go on at the moment um, these 149 mils they're all on return fire um, if you put artillery onto return fire and wait until they've aimed and then take off return fire they all fire at exactly the same time so I've got them currently aimed on a position all the way back there on the uh, Nas horn, and you can see as I release return fire, they all fire away at the same time. All of the shells go off. And since this is just outside of corrected shot, I wanted to make sure that I got maximum fire on effect um, onto the Nas horn in an attempt to kill it. And well, don't manage to do it this time around. So my infantry is uh, all in position again. My first wave is just reaching the hill. It's going to be supported by a Panzer IV from Tiny Rick. And we've got the Sturm Pioneer. Second uh, volley does come down there onto the Nashorn soon after, forcing it back, but again, not getting the kill. So the infantry is just the yeah, attack moving forwards, supporting Tiny Rick's forces. And I'm just going to wait and bring these up afterwards. My AA is now getting into position as well. We've made some ground on the left-hand side. Do manage to find an AT gun in there. That's going to save the Panzer IV for the time being. But there is still a T6 Tiger about that's hanging out on this right-hand hill. There's also going to be the AT gun that's going to be shooting at that as well as the M15 AA. The Panzer IV is not in a very nice place. And here comes some rocket artillery from the Soviets. going to be my pack 40 firing at the t6 tiger there unfortunately used up all its apcr shells and did manage to get the kill so there we go all right here comes my next wave of infantry charging up the hill look at him go just manned with rifles so not too good at long range. 
And we got uh, Ceylon coming in with a bunch of infantry to repel our attack on this hill. And my intention was to take this hill and then push this town because we'd be able to cover it. But what you may have noticed back here is I'm bringing in a bunch more artillery. So we've got now six 149 mils and they are going to be on targets like so. So I'm going for the counter battery right now. We're going to be putting a couple of volleys here, a couple of volleys here, and then a couple of volleys here. And yeah, that's just to pin down all of the artillery that they currently have, which was, I believe, quite a bit at this point. If I just jump it to the neutral perspective, hopefully the game doesn't crash. Um, we can see three SU-76Ms here. We've got four more here. Over on the left-hand side, there's like multiple more. I didn't actually know that they were SU-76Ms at the time, so my counter battery is a bit pointless because I basically don't pin them down like I should, or or I guess don't kill them like I should. I'm just pinning them down and then they can move afterwards anyway. And we got the uh, 40 mils, they're going to be engaging the IL-2. Just trying to shoot that down, nicely done. And it's actually quite interesting, moving back into my perspective here. We can't actually see these right now from my perspective, but it has left them on the map. So <laughs> we are able to kind of see the effectiveness of my counter battery. And you can see that my artillery shells are coming in here. Ceylon can just move them away. It's as simple as that. Um, and, but I'm not obviously wary of, of what artillery I'm up against, unless I get direct recon capability. But I've got plenty of these guys, and these are 25 pounders. Yes, indeed. The Hungarians have 25 pounders. And I've got a lot of them. Uh, this is another seven pieces of artillery, and they are going to create a second group that I can saturate other areas with, especially with the amount of infantry that I have here now pushing up. Of course, they do have their own artillery, so my plan was just to have one group of my artillery kind of counter battery and then have the other one used for like corrected shot and I guess kind of continuing to push forwards rating that kind of advanced artillery whatever it is um, so my AT guns on the left they're still chilling helping our avocado out I'm not sure if they actually did too much they kind of just sat here but Avocado is still contesting against Kerbs. He's doing a great job of holding him back whilst myself and Tyrek kind of concentrate more on the left-hand side here. It's an absolutely crazy amount of infantry just all pinned down on the side of the mountain here. <laughs> Poor Hungarians. PE2 is going to come in. They're going to hit the Panzer Fours. Unfortunately, my AA is kind of lacking the range because it's quite far back from where this bush is. But if I move up the AA any further, units on these hills can basically shoot at me. But look at that artillery coming down. Beautiful. Forces the Tiger back off that hill. And now I'm going to be bringing in some Stugs on the left-hand side to potentially make a push towards this town. Because I can use this hill as cover if I've got infantry on top of it to basically make a play towards here. And that was kind of the intention with all of this coming up. So these 25 pounders are now going to be taking shots at the Nashorn, which kind of just sat very cleanly in the middle of this, these trees here. It looks really cool actually in that position. You gotta love the graphics of this game, it's just gorgeous. This has a watchful eye, and a panther coming down the hill there. Not quite in range, I don't believe. And now it gets into range, fires away. Has already been affected by my artillery though, so... Yeah, it's getting forced back for the time being. I've also got uh, artillery coming in onto the edge of this hill to push back the Automachiki. So the hill is basically fully ours, which is really nice. AL-2M coming in with the cluster munitions onto the Panzer 4J is able to drop them and does manage to get the kill but is going to lose the aircraft 
And I don't think that's quite worth it, honestly, losing an IL-2 like that for a Panzer IV, because the Panzer IVs are quite cheap. Now, in this situation, it was probably good, because that you don't have that armor piece that can put pressure on you, but since we have all this armor coming up on this left-hand side now, that uh, kill is very negligible compared to the amount of damage if you could cluster bomb all three of these dugs together or something like that. But check out this artillery coming down. I've got my large artillery hitting the town down here, and I've got my smaller artillery pieces, the 25 pounders, hitting over here. And it's just pinning down everything in my way. Look at that beautiful artillery. And then eventually what I can do is push my low vest forwards to take that as well. So the intention was to use all of these infantry squads, as you can see. Currently, they're heading through the town. And that wasn't quite the intention. It was just where I'd placed them. And now they're all coming in off the edge of the map. So I think I do eventually kind of tell them to come to the left and then move up this road instead. But for now, my uh, Lovez are just sitting on top of this hill, chilling out with the flames. And all my artillery is coming in to basically hit anything that we spot. So keeping them pinned, pushing up with Tiny Rick and his armor. It's all going well. We're becoming a real menace, honestly. And check out the concentration of forces on this left hand side is absolutely ridiculous got another three stugs here but just busy pushing up with these ones at the moment so I believe I forget about these for a little while I'm a little happily moving up for the time being though PU2 is going to come in with the rockets does manage to kill the panther these PU2s are actually really strong against things like panthers see that one even in the front armor manages to take it out so both the Tiny Rick's Panthers go down, his Jagd Panzer also goes down, and I've got one Stug left, which is now being hit by the BTRD. I'm going to have to get AA forwards, and I have been trying to do so. You can see that I've been pushing these this AA off the hill a bit further forwards, but as soon as I did, it got hit by all of this artillery back here. And I'm just going for the counter battery onto all these SC-76s, but you can see Ceylon's just going to be spreading them out now, so that can no longer be the case. Uh, meanwhile, all of these infantry, they're running across the open. So that's a long way to run. But they're making it. They're doing it for me. Even under fire from the infantry on the left side here, the Strelke. Opening up, they're going to get hit from the right-hand side, the T-34-76 coming over the top. They're going to get more shots down so yep still counter battering as much as I can going for the 122 mils of uh, curbs since they are definitely not armored and I can actually see them but all these 70 su 76s they're just kind of they are out of action as long as they're pinned because they're going to be incredibly like inaccurate but still unlikely to kill them unless I can get direct hits so just continuing with the art with the infantry push whilst the artillery comes down and we're getting really really close now to being able to take the town if I continue to pin these guys down. So I've got more Lovez coming up and you can see their fast move taking them to the town on the left side. And we are taking a bit of counter battery but it doesn't matter all that much since all of my units are really spread out. So every time they are ordered to be fired upon they're only going to be hit one of them. Excuse me, I just had to clear my throat. But either way, um, the push goes on. Uh, the initial units that came across here, uh, they all died. Poor chaps, I don't even know where their bodies are. They just got blown to smithereens. So now the second wave is arriving, and they're going to be making the push as well. Now I had to unload these guys a little bit early because of the uh, PTRDs. And you can see one of my units did get killed there before it unloaded uh, somewhere up this road but I've got the rest of the Lovez here and they are actually accompanied by some radios so I brought up some uh, the, some of the uh, uh, Tusharek here and the intention is to get a corrected shot onto this town so that I can push them out 
and carry on. Now, meanwhile, on the right-hand side, Tanerik's uh, getting some ground with the Panthers and the Panzer IVs. He's putting pressure onto this objective, which is nice. Currently, we have 13 to 11, since uh, Awokado has basically solidified this objective on the right-hand side and is now pressing the next objective. Now, I have a lot of uh, ME 210s here, you can see. And I've just purchased all of them to do a nice big bombing strike when I get the chance. I had intended to overwhelm the AA here and kind of just bomb them to smithereens, but I didn't really do this correctly, so I have to stop my ME-410s from targeting stuff for a little while, and then what I can do is uh, give them targets. But the way I did it was a bit awful. I don't know. They're, um, they're, not, they're kind of spread out, but and the way they're coming in from both sides is nice. But if they'd just been like really concentrated and got all the bombs down at the same time, that would have been way better. What I did discover by doing this, however, is that there is not so much AA on the left-hand side, and there is quite a lot of AA on the right-hand side. I did manage to kill off the M15 there, as you can see, but all of these fighters come in. They do manage to shoot down one of my ME410s. The other ones are doing runners, trying to get out of there. We are kind of baiting them over my AA, which is nice. Especially this Jack-9 up here. Takes a lot of hits, gets shot down. So it wasn't completely for nothing, that strike. It baited them more than anything. And my Stugs are getting in position to help out against this town. My Lovers are here. I've got the uh, Radio Man up in position as well. So that's all good. And I've also got these airplanes coming in. The HE-46E. These are going to provide me with 310mm off map, I believe it is. And that's going to do a hell of a lot of damage. So all of my infantry is still currently pinned down here. I think the bombing strike was also intended to push back this T-3476, but didn't manage to. I've got my ME-109 G8s just hanging about, trying to find uh, basically targets for the off map. I don't really see too much, so I just decided to hit the town and the hill. You managed to shoot down that Yak-9 as it goes for my HE. One on the left hand side takes a lot of fire, but uh, that IL-2 does not go down. Malovez still being killed in the open here. These ones are getting a little bit closer, but I'm actually going to forcefully move them back since of course the off map is coming in and you'll see soon enough exactly how powerful this is. So I think it was a, a little while back now, uh, somebody asked me like what the massive craters were on the map and what they were caused by. It was this off map. It's like having a bunch of cargo rats come down. You'll see. Here we go. Any second now. <laughs> yeah. Some big old artillery. And they are definitely 100% pinned as that strokey squad gets directly hit. And with that out of the way, well, you can see we capture that town, or what's left of it, immediately. So, we've taken another point. Um, Tiny Rick's still making ground. Uh, we've got the one on the far side of the town that should be contested. And on the right hand side, uh, Avocado has this point, this point, and now this point firmly under control. So yeah, we're 16 to 8, 7 minutes until defeat for our opponents. Artillery flying all over the place as I continue to uh, fire at any targets that I see. Loads more infantry on the way just to secure this objective. And I also end up intending to go for this objective, so we push up to there as well as my artillery comes in for the second time round to find their next strikes onto the enemy. My L2 is coming in again, going for the shot onto the Panther G. Are going to get their rockets off. Don't manage to get the kill. I'm going to manage to get my off map onto the hill here and over on this left hand side. Let's put it back into uh, neutral perspective, see if we actually hit anything with these. So there's just a couple of units of infantry here. Uh, there's a couple of units of infantry on the hill, including the radio man. Let's really see the effectiveness of these strikes. So I am curious. Yak-9 does go down there. 
ME109s from Tiny Rick going to be trying to engage the PE2. But it does manage to kill off that Panther. Again, those PEs proving that they are very, very good. Uh, off maps come down on the left side. That's going to be hitting those squads nicely. Off maps now coming down on this hill as well. Those Sapri hit hard. So far, no direct hits. Oh, there goes one unit of infantry on the left-hand side. The radio goes down on this hill. And my Lofes are continuing to push up against Ceylon, who is pretty much holding on for dear life right now. So, one unit in my way on the left-hand side. And since we utterly destroyed the town, he has no cover. And uh, my Lofes are pushing up. Over on this side, the Lothes just continuing to rush the hill. The Hungarians, <laughs> absolutely no chill. Charging forwards, doing their best. P2 going to come in, manage to kill my Stug, which sucks. Trying to get the AA forwards again. You can see me moving that up. And here come the ME 210s for more bombing strikes. So the Stroke die on the left-hand side, that's no longer defended. So the front line is going to push over that objective. Well, once we get close there, it will. And, well, my Lofers here, they do have Panzerfaust, so the T-34-76s do have to back off. And I do have two Stugs still, which can engage T-34s quite well from a distance, so that's nice. These uh, ME-210s getting taken out. It's another ME-210. Going to get absolutely smashed by artillery. Those uh, <laughs> AA vehicles. I tried to actually bomb these Maxim 4Ms. But it didn't work out too well. And this uh, off map's also going to go down. But I did manage to drop the off map, so that's not too bad. I wasn't unhappy with that. Um, I'm off mapping the far side of this town so that if any reinforcements come in, uh, they'll probably get there just as this off map lands. And then my Lovez can just move up and take those positions without really being threatened. So, as you can see, uh, I have a lot of units on this map right now. <laughs> we are, of course, playing Juggernaut, but I think with this being like a superior infantry division, it's just it's just incredible. I, I really enjoy playing this game in this kind of style. I made a, a, a video actually called Artillery Doctrine. I would say that this was like more so, especially considering we used the off-map. We've used all of these 25-pounders. I've got all of the 149 millimeters, and you can see that I've been having to replace the supply. We got through so much supply in this battle. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six supply trucks there. Another six on this side easily. It's 12 trucks of artillery, <laughs> of supply, sorry, <laughs> gone through in this game. I did also use one up on this hill to resupply the pack 40s and so on, so yeah, there's all that as well. But that off map comes down nicely. We take control of that area. I'm just <laughs> occupying the remaining houses that aren't obliterated. And <laughs> just so many craters everywhere. This left side's been cracked open completely as more of my infantry just floods on in. I've got these Akasok on their way. More Lofes. <laughs> We've got the Goyo Solo Shock even moving forwards now. I just start moving forwards all of my units. Uh, with Tyneric saying to push forwards my infantry from the town to this right hand side, I just decided to move everything up. There's like no reason not to right now because we have more or less taken full control of this left hand side. Yeah, I had a lot of a lot a lot of fun with this game for sure. Now two minutes and ten seconds till our opponent's defeat. As our infantry floods the field. Going full Russian tactics, even though we're the Hungarians. Trying to find whatever's left on this hill to get rid of that threat. Continuing to push through on this hill. I've literally got commands. It's, I'm just telling all of my Lovers that are currently on the field to attack move towards the spawn. That's pretty much it. We're going to take out one of the AA pieces. We're going to take out another AA piece here as all of my Lovers move up. Uh, the Akasok going to be engaging the Strafniki here in the open, doing loads of damage. It's glorious. Absolutely glorious. Check him out as they run up the hill here.
all this AA able to freely open up as it's moving forwards. Tiny Rick using his mobile wagon as well there, but we managed to claim the kill. All this infantry now attack moving towards the spawn on the left hand side. 50 seconds left on the clock, all of my artillery coming in onto theirs. I think I pretty much had both units or both sets of artillery hitting the same lot. Oh, we're going for this uh, AA as well so that I can bring in the ME410s again and potentially my off map. Although I think all the off map was used up, but yeah. Either way, incredible game. As you can see, it ended up in a lot of craters. Our juggernaut divisions really coming out on top after we managed to hold them back in the early to mid game. Going to be spending the rest of the cash that I had just pulled at the moment to bring in a load of ME109 G6s for a massive dogfight at the end here. Tiny Rick starts the engagement against all of these Yak 9s, loses two of his ME109s, uh, but unfortunately, with only four seconds left on the clock, my ME109s will not make it in time, and that will be the end of the game. And what a game it was! Narrach Lake, 48 minutes and five seconds. Yeah. Crazy stuff. In the end, 3,945 kills to 2,450 losses. I think we were helped out a lot by Tiny Rick's like, Panthers here and there. They definitely bolstered our line. But in general, I think that it does show that, especially in team games, these divisions can be really strong. I think the Tardalek is actually a tier C division. So if you build them in a certain way, like in this case, we went for the artillery, and they can be really, really strong. And I think it's important for people not to look at the tiers too much and really just jump into the divisions and really have a go with them and see what you can do with them. Because my favorite division right now, especially on the Soviet side, is um, Maneuver Group Turin. I find it's incredibly aggressive and I love the Vanguard play with it. But then I played this game and I really enjoyed using all of the artillery, um, especially the big off map. It's really, really fun. And uh, pushing through for that, that late game where you have like an abundance of infantry that you're just throwing at your enemy, it's incredible. It just makes these epic scenes and the whole game is gorgeous. So it just makes it all better. Anyway, <laughs> well played to our opponents. Uh, good job by Tiny Rick and Avocado. Avocado was having troubles in the mid game and early game, but managed to definitely take his points on the right hand side in the late game. So good job. Well done. Uh, in terms of our kills, look how much these 40 mils paid themselves off. That's 30 points of AT, taking out four T-34s. This one taking out the two Gavardia and a T-34. Lovely stuff. This 40 mil just sniping some infantry as they come down the road. And then my AA was also doing really well. The 40 mil shooting down all the Yak 9s. That's where a lot of our points came from, for sure. As my artillery didn't actually kill all that much, Considering how much I invested into it, this 149 mil did okay, killing a 122 mil and two SU-76Ms. This one also getting some nice counter battery hits, but in general, not actually too many like direct hits that managed to find kills. And the 305 millimeter off map, oh that's what it is. It's not 310, it's 305. Um, didn't actually kill too much either. I think it just forced back everything on those hills, and we'd really just like cleaned house at the end there with all that artillery. Um, which was already kind of broken down by the Panthers and we also have my Stugs moving up and then a lot of it came down to just the infantry pushing up as well. So yeah, we had the units uh, to push just about. I think I was running out of like Stugs and stuff to support, but otherwise we're all good. In terms of losses, uh, this 3 star 45 mil did a lot of work initially. Managed to take out a Stug as well. And those T6 Tigers always difficult to get through. Other than that, nothing really stood out um, other than the AA here uh, that did manage to shoot down a couple of ME210s. Uh, just a load of Lovez kills where I was just charging them into the open and getting them slaughtered. <laughs> Probably could have avoided that with some smoke or some support of some sort. Because I think the 25 pounders do actually have smoke. But anyway, there we go. That is it for now. An awesome game on that actually. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.